Now, it may be called corned beef, but for the uh, last couple hundred years at least, corned beef has been pickled in a brine. Now, of course, a brine's really nothing more than some water, some salt, maybe a little bit of uh, sugar, but in our case, it'll be just a wee bit more elaborate. I have here uh, two quarts of water, which I have placed over high heat. To that, we will add uh, one cup of kosher salt. Now, if you use a uh, different salt, say just table salt or pickling salt, you're going to want to weigh it because it takes up less space volumetrically. You're looking for uh, uh, just under 10 ounces. We're also going to add half a cup of brown sugar, light or dark, does not really matter. And last but not least, two tablespoons of saltpeter. Now, as I said before, this is an optional ingredient, but I like that pink color, so I am going to go for it. Since our brine is going to deeply penetrate our meat, I see no reason not to, uh, you know, send a few uh, extra spices along for the ride. Uh, let's say, well, a cinnamon stick. Uh, we'll break that into several pieces. A uh, teaspoon of mustard seeds, teaspoon of black peppercorns, maybe, I don't know, eight whole cloves, maybe eight uh, allspice berries, 12 juniper berries, a uh, couple of bay leaves, and half a teaspoon of ground ginger. That ought to do it. Kill the heat when the uh, salt and sugar have uh, thoroughly dissolved. Add your spices and let the liquid cool. Uh, it's time to chill this down. And we also need to add more water. So I have here uh, two pounds of ice. That is uh, one quart of water, frozen, of course. That will go in. And uh, if you want to speed things up even more, just park the whole thing in a sink full of cold water. The pickling process is going to take 10 days here in your refrigerator, so you're going to have to make some space. Uh, as far as containment, once the uh, brine has cooled down, I put it and the meat in a zip-top bag, two-gallon range. Of course, these can spring a leak, so you're going to want to put that in some kind of pan or other appropriate containment. And if a lid is present, that would also be a good idea. Now, every couple of days, I'm going to flip the bag over just to make sure that uh, the brine concentration remains consistent. When the 10 days are up, remove the brisket from the brine, throw the brine away, and give the meat a good rinse under cold water. Have standing by in a large pot, one small onion quartered, a large carrot, and one stalk of celery, both coarsely chopped. Now, the meat can go right on top. Remember, this is corned, not cooked. So, we've got to get to that. We're gonna just uh, add enough water to cover by one inch. Now, get this onto high heat and allow it to come to a boil. When it hits a boil, drop the heat to low, put on the lid and simmer for two and a half to three hours. Why so long? Well, you gotta remember, we're, uh, we're, we're talking about the front axle of the animal, remember? And that's got a lot of, oh hush, a lot of connective tissue in it. To break that down and soften it, it's gonna require moisture, low heat, and time. When the meat is fork tender, let it cool thoroughly and then slice very thin. And make sure you cut across the grain. Now, I uh, could say that uh, this is nothing more than the ultimate sandwich meat, but corned beef is more. It can be the centerpiece of many, many a great meal. 